Yeah, good evening, Philippines. Uh, good afternoon, Middle East. And good morning here in the US. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> But first, I would like to say hi to our Zoom participants, 66, as of right now. And then for those who are watching on Facebook, especially if you're not yet a member of um, IFNG, um, please make sure that you like our page and send us direct message, okay, for, for me to add it to add you and then i would like to say hi first to um to my co-admins um marvin gladys where are you gladys um pakihanap si gladys so wala na siya <laughs> may job lang hindi lang nagpaparamdam sa new york and then si manuel is flying back to ksa michelle is waiting for id stress sa philippines nurses um or bound to us especially waiting for ID, stress sila, okay? And then, um, lastly, Ethel and, yeah, Ethel. <laughs> Ethel and Michelle, okay. I think that's all. And I actually, my friend is watching right now, Rhea Joanne, who's in the Zoom chat. Hi, Rhea, keep it up. <laughs> But before anything else, I will take this opportunity to say happy, happy anniversary to Elite. It um I think two years old now. Okay. Four. Four. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> four years old na sila. Okay. Mama D, congratulations for your four years in the business. Okay. Thank you, Sir Jeff. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Sir Jeff. Yes. Okay. Happy anniversary, everyone. Okay, so wait. Um, yeah, it's just a quick, um, you know, background about Elite. So how did you start it like four years ago? Ah, yes. Because I was lecturing for an institution before. And then that's the time that I decided, guys, to start my own institution for me to have, like, for me to incorporate my ideas more. And then four years ago, your Sir Jello and I opened Elite Intellect. We just had, like, one very tiny branch here in Cabanatuan City. And then that's the, tar that's the time that the students started recognizing us. And then, of course, IFNG discovered us way back in 2020. So thank you so much, IFNG, because without you guys, this would not, wouldn't be possible for Elite Intellect for us to share our knowledge for the students worldwide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Follow-up question. Why Cabanatuan? Ah, yes. Because here in Cabanatuan City, Sir Jeff, there are... Uh, there is a scarcity when it comes to institutions on the IELTS. Before, I have seen the trend with which the students are having a hard time passing their examination. And that's the time that I decided, okay, this will be my comfort location because I am from I am from Pampanga. But then again, I moved to Kabanatuan City. So this is where I opened the first branch of Elite Intellect. Mm, okay. So um How do you see um, elite intellect in the future? Wow. Oh, <laughs> <Interview>. <laughs> I'm actually very excited for the future because in a way, um, some, I, I am happy that the students are, what do you call this, being helped by elite intellect. And of course, that's the main goal. That's the main aim because they said that if a company reaches four years or five years in the industry, you have to set a goal. And our goal at elite intellect for the upcoming years is for us to help students more for, for platforms for free and even help students on uh, learning systematically for their IELTS. So maybe 10 years from now, elite intellect will be, what do you call this, somewhat helping more of the students when it comes to their preparation, as well as, of course, with faith. Okay. And um, lastly... Um, um, how will you encourage, for example, like me, I'm not really good in English and I'm a shy type and think, you know, I'm overthinking that I cannot do, I cannot pass um, IELTS. Okay. So yeah, there are, yeah, there are really people like that with which they are shy or they feel like when they speak, they're not going to be heard on the examination or they feel like you're not going to pass the examination. But guys, one thing that you need to remember is nobody is a perfect English speaker. Okay, even the native speakers, they're not perfect when it comes to their grammar, their vocabulary. Nobody's perfect when it comes to pronunciation. So it's, it is with the way that you carry yourself on the exam. Because I always told uh, the batch of Sir Jeff before, way back, it's, it doesn't matter if you're not really, if you doesn't have an accent. What matters is if you know how to carry yourself on the exam. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much and happy anniversary again. Thank so you so much. Guys, maybe, you know, we have Rockwell. 
<laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. And advance, <laughs> advance happy anniversary to IFNG. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I'll give you another floor. Thank you, Sir Jeff. Okay, guys. So, welcome back to our discussion here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. Again, welcome to our fun discussion with which I'm going to be helping you guys on your speaking examination and know that it's going to be a fun class. Okay? Don't worry, guys. Don't leave the hesitations behind. Leave your worries behind. Leave every fear that you have on the IELTS speaking examination because one thing that I would want you guys to remember is that the IELTS examination, although quite scary, it is still doable, right? It's doable. Like me, I'm Joeable, right? So the IELTS speaking is doable. Chari, Joeable! <laughs> Okay, guys, so welcome back to another fun and informative lecture live here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group with Elite Intellect 9. Okay, so if it's your first time to join us tonight, I am pleased to meet you. My name is Clint Joseph Tyler, the founder and master lecturer of Elite Intellect IELTS OET and Clex and NMC CBT Specialist PH. I am an IELTS expert for the past 12 years, also known as your mother, dragon mama, dragon mother, D mama, D mommy, D all big Ds in the world. We don't like small Ds, you know? Half Filipino, half Filipina. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh, let's play a game, Mona. Let's finish the lyrics, okay? Let's see if you guys are awake and typing for today. Thank you guys so much. Okay, ready? Okay, guys. So I, I'm going to be <clears throat> singing part. Okay, part of uh, what they call this part of a song, and then I would want you guys to finish the lyrics. Okay, so most of these songs are Filipino songs, but some of them is going to be American songs. Okay, let's start with the first one. Okay, ito sumikat na sikil, sumikat to si JK Labaho ang kumanta nito. Okay, ready? <clears throat> finish the lyrics. Unahan sa ilalim ng. Okay, ready? What's the lyrics? Sa ilalim ng puting ilaw, mali naman kayo guys. Mali, hindi ganun. Hindi siya puting ano, puting ilaw. Ganito yon Kayo naman, oo. Sa ilalim ng pag-ibig sa puso mo. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ano ba yan? Yung mga nanonood, mali-mali yung lyrics. Nakakaloka. Diyos ko, walang common lyric education. <laughs> okay, ready. Come on. All right. American Disney. I don't know if this is Disney, okay? American movie. Ready, guys? Okay, finish the lyrics, okay? <clears throat> Let it go. Let it go. Okay, what's the next part of the lyrics? Come on. Come on, guys. It's from the movie Frozen, right? Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Can't hold me back anymore. Malina naman kayo. That's wrong. Ano ba yan? Malina naman yung alam niyo. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Let it go. Let it go. Speaking words of wisdom. Let it go. <laughs> Okay, tapusin natin to. Let her be, let her be, let her be, let her be. Ang susunod na letra, letter. <laughs> Diyos ko, napapala ako sa kakanood-nood ng ate gay bago mag-umpisa yung lecture. Ayan tuloy. Namamash up ko lahat. Okay, so I hope that your nerves are already calm. Okay, with that icebreaker. Umpisa pa lang, Sir Joseph. May icebreaker ka na. Okay, so tonight, guys, <clears throat> sana ganito lang ang IELTS, no? <laughs> Sana ganito lang yung IELTS, no? With which you're just going to sing songs and then babalasubasin mo lang siya, papasa ka na. But then again, the unfortunate thing on the IELTS examination, guys, is that it's um, somewhat specialized, okay? And I know that a lot of you guys are already at the edge of your seats, especially those who are about to take their examination, let's say, two weeks from now, right? Those students who are going to be taking their examinations two weeks from now, a week from now, three weeks from now, that's the time that you guys actually have 
the nerves worked up, right? But don't you worry because Mama D is here to teach you guys a lot of valuable lessons for the IELTS tonight, okay? This entire month, we are going to be discussing about the speaking examination here live at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. Okay, so before we start, let's go to the message of love first. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. This is from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. One thing's for sure, guys, is that whatever you plan to be or wherever you plan to go in your life, you always have to offer it to the purpose of the Lord. Okay, you always have to tell the Lord, Lord, what is your purpose for, for my life? If this is your purpose, I will go boldly to where you would want me to go. Okay, all righty. <clears throat> Magandang message yan bago mag-umpisa yung speaking exam, right? Before you go to the speaking exam, di ba? Lord, whatever it is, okay? If this is your purpose, I will do it. Okay, guys. So, we let's now start with your discussion for tonight. We're going to use Elite Notes, okay? For those of you on Facebook, okay, or at Zoom, if it's your first time to join us on our live discussion here tonight, guys, I'm going to be sending a copy of the handouts later on after the discussion to your admins, okay? So, if it's your first time to join us on Facebook, for you to get a copy of our PDF handouts for tonight, the only thing that you have to do, it's for free, okay? It's free. The only thing that you have to do is to like IELTS Filipino Nurses Group later on after the discussion or right now and then you message the admins for them to add you on their group chats okay on their group chats you're going to have a lot of privileges at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group apart from the free classes free practice room free handouts free mock tests diba guys okay you would need to become a member of IFNG because guys, believe me, IELTS Filipino Nurses Group has helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students worldwide when it comes to their IELTS preparation. Okay, guys. So let's start. Let me just open my elite notes for you guys. Okay. So <clears throat> before we begin, while I'm opening your elite notes, why do you think students fail? Okay. Let's talk about that first. Why do you think students fail the IELTS speaking examination? In Tagalog, borket bumabak kimokyog sak yung mga jugets the orange stra sa anek. Why do students fail the IELTS speaking examination? Come on, I want to see the way that you think, okay? The way that you see it. Why do you think a lot of students sometimes they cannot get their target scores when it comes to their speaking examination, okay? All right, so come on. <clears throat> Let's see your ideas right there. If you're on Facebook, please type it on the comment section. For those of you at Zoom, type it on your chat box, okay? Okay, good. <clears throat> Hesitation, anxiety. That's good, okay? That's true. That's technically true. Okay, for Victor, lack of preparation. That is indeed true again, okay? From Pia, mental block. Sometimes it does really happen with which you are already you already have your mojo and you're about to speak, but then again, somebody took your ideas away, right? From Anne, they are not ready yet. Yeah, okay? That's a good point, Anne, right there. Let's talk about that. Some of the students, even if they're not yet ready to go to their speaking examination, they tend to push through. Guys, believe me, there's no such thing as luck, okay, on the IELTS examination. Hindi yan yung nagising ka, kinumagahan, tapos sila po sabi mo, makapag-take nga ng IELTS, tapos pumuntag file ka, nag-exam ka, tapos... Dito nine ka. No, it's not that. Okay, there's no such thing as the luck on the IELTS exam. If you're not ready, don't rush. Okay, fools rush as, as they say. That's what I always tell my students is even if you have like an inch of a doubt. Sorry, medyo karen dabila yung bosses ko ngayon. <laughs> if you have an inch of a doubt in, inside your head, okay, don't. Don't take your IELTS yet. Don't force yourself. Okay, you have to bind your time and put your ducks in a row. Okay. All right, people are nervous, overthinking, lack of preparation. There you go, self-doubt, lack of exposure. Yeah, that's a good thing too. People, they think that you're just going to speak in English on the IELTS interview. No, it's not that, okay? Mahirap ang tanong at topic, yeah. 
sometimes the questions are actually quite difficult to the point that the students do not have an idea. But then again, stick with us this entire month because I will be teaching you um, how to answer uh, what they call these difficult questions on the exam. Okay, low self confidence, lack of confidence, lack of idea about the topic. Okay, all of these might make sense. Okay, now before we answer that, guys, know that the IELTS speaking examination is an academic interview. Okay, so when we say it's an academic interview, what we mean by this one is, okay, the IELTS speaking is an academic interview. Okay, when we say it's an academic interview, basic responses would not suffice on the exam. Okay, so ano po yung suffice? Suffice yung ano, yung may sabaw, kulay puti, yung may ano, yung may macaroni, tas uh, hinihigo pag may patay, suffice. <laughs> So, pasyon, okay? It would not suffice, okay, for you to give your examiners basic responses on the exam, okay? It's not enough, okay, for you to give them basic responses. At the end of the day, the IELTS has an expectation when it comes to their test takers. Actually, it's not just an expectation. It's a set of expectations, okay? Set of expectations. Mamaya pag-uusapan natin kung ano ba ang ina-expect ng exam sa'yo. And that's the most important thing that you should learn for you to adjust yourself on the expectations of the test, okay? Now, the IELTS is an academic interview. It's not a basic interview. So basically, what I would want you to do here is there should be no basic answers on the exam. <clears throat> okay, let's say you were asked, okay, you were asked by your examiner, what is your favorite book? Okay, now unfortunately, like me, if you're not a wide reader, so there's a quite there's quite limited idea, okay? There's limited idea that we tend to have inside our heads, right? What's your favorite book? So some people will say, well, I love Pharmacology 101. <laughs> I love NCM 104, Medical Surgical Nursing, Nanda. <laughs> Anatomy and Physiology, because technically true, that's the last book that you have read, right? Okay, but unfortunately, guys, you cannot say that on the exam because it is a basic response, okay? Kahit na yun lang talaga yung nabasa mo sa tanang buhay mo, diba? Even if you only read um, NCM 101, 102, 103, 104, may yung, ano, yung Anatomy and Physiology, um, mga halamang gamot, ulasi mang bat even if those are the only things that you have read, you have to come up with a response that will catch the attention of your examiner. Okay? Catching the attention of your examiner is actually a good thing. Okay? So catch the attention of your examiner. Okay? Let's say, <clears throat> let's say you heard of a book. Okay, you heard of a book and then you have not read it. You, you were not able to read it before, but you know what the book is about because you have seen it somewhere, maybe on Facebook, or you may have, you might have heard it somewhere from a friend. So you can say that, right? Instead of saying, well, I love, uh, I love medical surgical nursing because when I was studying, you know, medical surgical nursing is quite important for us. Instead of saying that on the exam, you can say, well, I have read this book before. It's called Sigma Protocol by Robert Ludlum, with which it talks about a lot of different types of codes. And some say that when people were able to finish that book, then they are bound to become geniuses. Yung mga ganyan, di ba? Hindi mo naman nabasa yung Sigma Protocol by Robert Ludlum, di ba? Pero... Diba? Pero at least you know what it means. That's what we mean by no basic answers on the exam. Lack of guidance from experts like Mama D. Oh, Steph, thank you so much. Don't worry. Stick with IFNGBDBD. IF we, we have a lot of experts here that can help you on your preparation. Okay? All right. We got gotcha. you. All right. <clears throat> so, guys, the examination is, okay, 15 to 20 minutes okay i always tell my students this i don't know if it's true but then again based on my observation um when 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 people consume more than 20 minutes on the speaking exam it means that they're not going to get good scores <laughs> 
<laughs> when students tend to spend like 25 minutes inside the interview room or 30 minutes inside the interview room they're not bound they're bound to uh, they're not bound to get good scores why it's because guys one thing that you would need to remember is that Maybe what your examiner is doing here is they are giving you chances. That's why they're asking you so many questions, okay? So if your time rate on the examination is, let's say, 15 minutes, oh, good job to you, okay? Most likely, you'll be on like a 7.5 and above, okay? If you only finish your examination for 15 minutes, okay? So the entire test will run for 15 to 20 minutes, guys. And how many parts does the IELTS speaking have? Come on. <clears throat> How many parts or how many tasks does the IELTS speaking have? Ilan ang tasks ng IELTS speaking? Come on, type in your answers right there. I'm interested to see. Okay, so three, 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 three. Okay, three. There you go. Unfortunately, guys, we already have four parts if you're going to be considering the follow-up round. Okay, so there are four parts. Okay, on the IELTS speaking exam. Okay, so sir, what are, there, what are those four parts? Okay, you have task one, task two, your follow-up round, And of course, your task three. Your follow-up round is no longer the same as your task three. During our time, when I was preparing for the IELTS way back 2009, okay, um, we only have three parts because what the examiners do on the third part is they're going to ask you questions which are related to your topic. But now, we have observed that there's a significant surge with um, examinations that the follow-up question is a separate part, okay? So you always have to consider it as four parts rather than just three parts, okay? All right. <clears throat> What else, guys, okay? Here, let me, I have told this I have told many students this before, and I will tell you now, okay? Vocabulary, capacity, and natural delivery is the key to my heart, okay? Is the key to success. Your vocabulary adroitness, as well as, of course, your natural delivery is the key to success, okay? You have to speak naturally on the exam. Hindi po po pwede that you sound forced on the exam. Sir? Sir Joseph, I have a question. Um, What does force sound like? Okay, you want me to illustrate what force sounds like? Okay, here you go. <clears throat> Well, there are a lot of places in my local community that I love to go to because if I'm not doing anything, I tend to spend a lot of time there. But it's too forced. It's the roti, right? So when you are on the exam, you should say, well, there are a lot of things that I tend to enjoy in my community. And during my free time, I love to go there. Look at that, right? You have to have natural delivery on the exam. Don't force it. If you do not have an accent, don't force it on yourself, okay? The neutral accent would be enough, okay? It would suffice. <laughs> it would suffice on the examination for you to use the neutral accent. Okay, so ladies, 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 I have a question for the ladies who are watching right now, okay? Please type in. When you, if you're a single gal, okay, if you're a single lady, what would you want your husband to be? Okay, type in your answers right there. Okay, if you are, okay, if you're a single lady, okay, if you would want to have a husband in the future, what would you want your husband to be? Okay, type a characteristic of a husband that you would want. What's your expectation for a husband? Okay, come on, type it right there. Marl, hello! Marl is watching! Sabi ni Eka, otis ay autistic. Authentic. There you go. Okay, authentic. <clears throat> okay. From Loris, intelligent. Sasha, responsible. Eunice, God-fearing. Fevis, responsible. Jessa, responsible. There you go. Joy, silent husband. I love it. Okay. Mao, responsible. Sharon, God-fearing and responsible. See? Faithful, loving. Okay, you have expectations when it comes to your future husbands or wives. Okay, for the men. Just like the IELTS exam, it has an expectation. Okay, for the people. 
Okay? DIALS examination has a particular set of expectation for you to get a 7.5, 7.0, 8.0, and above. Now, this is the most important thing that you should learn, okay, is to know the expectation of the exam. So, let's talk about the expectation of the IELTS. of the IELTS with the test takers. Okay. All right. Ano ba ang ini-expect ng exam? No? What does the exam want you to become? Okay? So first things first, guys, is you need to be fluent. Oh, sorry. Okay. So first things first, guys, what I always tell my students is the examination expects for you to be fluent. Okay? Basically, your fluency, it matters on the exam. Sir, could you please simplify the concept of fluency for me? Because I tried Googling the public version of the band descriptors for the IELTS and I got dizzy like a pregnant woman in the morning. <laughs> so let me simplify, okay? First things first, with fluency is, okay, you should have a continuous, delivery or discussion okay on the examination guys you should have continuous delivery or discussion when we say continuity of your discussion there's no interruption in between okay you're not pausing you're not thinking too much when you are asked the question you answer immediately you don't give them a grand mal or a petty mal seizure right in between your words okay when we say fluent no? When you speak, you tend to say, well, one of the things that I tend to do when I am um, during my free time, one of the things that I tend to do during my free time is I love to read books. Well, I find solace with reading books, right? Instead of saying, um, the things that I love uh, doing is I read books because I find solace. With reading books, even you, even you sound unsure about the things that you were saying. Okay, so guys, no go getter type of person. Oh, that's a good characteristic. And oh, nga ganda yun. Shempre di ba? Kailangan yung husband natin mga go getter yan, di ba? Go and get me, get me, get me, baby. I'm yours. Come on and get me. You'll never be lonely, lonely, lonely. So baby, <laughs> come on and get me. <laughs> alam na alam ang batch ni Sir Joseph. Okay. What else? Okay. Next one, guys, is your answers. Okay. Your answers should be related to the question. Okay. If I ask you about your favorite fruit, you don't talk about cabbage, right? Because cabbage, I don't know if cabbage is a fruit, but I think it's not a fruit, right? I mean, if I ask you about your favorite fruit, you should not be talking about a Malabar spinach, right? If I ask you about your favorite place or favorite part of the house, you should not be telling me about the, your favorite part of the neighbor's house, right? It should be directly correlated. It should be directly connected to the question, okay? Don't talk about things which are not related to the question, guys, okay? Believe me, I have had a student before. He misheard the question, okay? The question is, how do colleagues prepare their co-workers to become internationally competent? That was the question, right? How do colleagues prepare their co-workers to be internationally competent. And then my student answered, well, in the Philippines, colleges tend to give more courses to the students which are exposing them to international culture, hence making them more globally competent. These learners, so do you think that question is highly related to the answer itself? Or the answer is really highly related to the question? No, because the question is about colleagues, co-workers, right? And then the student answered colleges. So be careful, okay? Be careful on the exam, all right? What else? <clears throat> Apart from that, guys, you are answering your questions well, or you are arranging your answers well, 
Okay, when we say arrangement of answers, guys, basically you have a clear flow of the things that you're trying to say. Like your examiner will hear your direct response about the idea, and then your examiner will hear your explanation, and your examiner will hear if you're giving them an example. Okay, that's one thing. Apart from arrange, later on, I'll teach you how to arrange your answers, believe me. Okay, next one is the use or the proper use of connectors and transitional phrases okay all right when we say connectors and transitional phrases guys it has a huge impact when it comes to your sentence flow okay if you do not know how to use connectors and transitional phrases don't you worry i think next week i will be teaching you that <laughs> okay now what else you have to answer the questions immediately Okay, once you are asked a question, please do not, uh, what do you call this? Do not wait for, like, let's say, Christmas Day for you to answer. Ano yun, sir? Huwag mo hintayin yung Pasko para sumagot ka. Di ba? Kailangan pagtanong, isang pitek, sagot agad. Okay? Agad-agad. Di ba? What is your favorite kemet? Pak! Well, it is the kemet bam bam. Oh, good. What what do you think is the channeling boom boom? Ah, it's the Kylie Minogue Saison. Di ba? Sagot, uh, sagot agad. Hindi po pwede na naghihintay ka pa. Hindi po pwede sa exam na. Well, in my local community, which is Cabanatuan, city, <laughs> nakahiwalay pa yung Cabanatuan tsaka yung city. <laughs> Don't do that on the exam, okay? Apart from Answering questions immediately, you should develop your topics naturally. Okay? It's like a normal conversation. Okay? It's like you're conversing to an academic friend. It's like you're talking to a friend who is studying at an Ivy League university or at an advanced in institution when you are talking to your examiners. Okay? But guys, please do not be morose on the exam. Sir, what's morose? Morose is like um, you're almost too robotic. When you're speaking, well, there are a lot of things that I enjoy in my community, you know, because those places are, and they're pretty much happy. I mean, it it's, gives me the sense of happiness and bliss when I experience that happy, yippee, yay, hey, Sabine, wow, 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 wow. It's too, uh, it's too blunt, right? It's still, mon it's still mundane, but it's still nonchalant, okay? Do not be that on the exam, okay? If you feel happy, then you should say, well, there are a lot of things that makes me happy, right? Or if you feel crestfallen, right? Well, unfortunately, the crestfallen thing about it is that, mm. Diba? You, you should have that flow, okay? When you are on the speaking examination, so as to ensure that you're delivering properly on the test, okay? All right. Now, next one, guys, okay? Apart from fluency, the examination expects you to have not very good, not perfect, okay? But good pronunciation, okay? When we say pronunciation, guys, what we technically mean by this one is, first things first is uh, basically the accuracy and clarity of your pronunciation. Okay? Accuracy and clarity of your pronunciation. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, this one. Okay, that word right there. Okay, look at that. Okay, I'm going to give you options. Okay, options, options, options. Option A. Okay, ready. Prodigious, prodigious. Letter B, prodigious, prodigious. Again, letter A, prodigious, prodigious. B, prodigious, prodigious. Okay, which, which one do you think is the accurate pronunciation for this one? A or B? Again, A is prodigious, prodigious. B is prodigious, prodigious. Okay, it's letter B. It is prodigious. Okay, kasi nga, I po yun, hindi you. Kapag kayo yun, like continuous, then that's the time that you're going to be uh, pronouncing it like that. Oh, we have a good question here. Wait, guys, okay? Sir, kapag po ba OBS is 6.5, pero sumabit sa speaking 6.5. If combined scores po, ang speaking lang po, need ko ipas, kahit di na 6.5 OBS yung second take 
take po. By which I think you still have to get OBS 6.5. Sir Jeff, do they still need to get OBS 6.5 on their second take when they're combining scores? Help me out, guys. Okay, kasi ang alam ko kailangan mas 7 nyo yung speaking tapos no less than 6 yata yung mga scores on other subtests. Okay, guys, if you know something about combining scores, please help us here, okay? All right. <clears throat> Now, next one. Okay, that's good. Okay, the accuracy and clarity of your pronunciation. All right. Next, uh, next thing, guys. Okay, you are not expected to have an accent. Okay, guys. Some students, okay, they tend to fall because of this. Okay, you are not expected to change your accent on the exam. Okay, when we say changing your accent, you're not expected to force yourself. Okay, to speak well. Okay, on the examination, like an American. Bawal ata, mother, ang combined scores kung sa visa screen po. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, okay. You are not expected, guys, to become, uh, to sound like an American. Or you're also not expected to sound like a British person. Okay? Because, guys... the neutral accent would be enough okay on the exam okay okay sir could you please tell me a person who has or people who has the neutral accent okay search them you have first is miss leia salonga every time that she speaks you understand every single syllable that she's trying to say right miss leia salonga the second one is miss catriona gray Right? I love the way that Catriona speaks because as Sir Jeff mentioned earlier before we started the class, she has a particular intonation which sounds excited when she's happy and which sounds lonely when she's trying to give a particular sad point. Right, So these are the two, okay, two facades that I could actually say that the people who are quite good when it comes to their neutral accent, Miss Lea Salonga and Miss Catriona Gray. All right, kung ayaw mo rupa may kinto, neutral accent, bet, bet mo yon. <laughs> What is your favorite part of the house? Well, parang tanga naman. The favorite part of the house that I love to go to is the kitchen because um how how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Ayan na naman, Sir Joseph. Gising ka na naman. <laughs> Energy brought to you by Cobra Energy Drink. Sa isang lago, heart attack. <laughs> okay. So, guys, you, you are not expected to change your accent on the test, okay? Don't force yourself to change your accent. The neutral accent would be enough. Kasi ang hirap din naman if you have an accent, but then again, you, you cannot be understood, Right? Well, there are a lot of places that I love to go to, especially in my local community. Given that I have two babies, I have one baby boy, one baby girl. Ha! I mean, if you have a Scottish accent like that, believe me, you're not going to be getting a, an 8.0 or 7.5 on the exam because it's quite difficult to understand your accent, right? Well, there are a lot of places that I love to go in my local community because I have two babies. I have one baby boy, one baby girl. I have two children. I mean, it's quite difficult, right? So again, guys, you are not expected to have an accent on the exam. Let me get that straight, okay? Is there what if I can do like a legit sounding British accent? If you can, why not go for it? Do it, all right? Just make sure that you're going to be using the British accent from the beginning of your test up to the end, up to the moment that you said goodbye to your examiner, right? The moment that you said hello, and you're on your British accent, and the moment that you say, okay, bye-bye, kailangan naka British accent ka pa rin. Okay? Because the problem with students sometimes, especially Filipinos who tend to use British accent on the exam, is that it's just up to the middle part of the exam. They tend to unscrew their accent already. So don't do that, okay? All right. So what else? <laughs> going uh, going forward. Okay. Uh, L1 accent is not apparent. Okay? When you say L1 accent, your language one accent should not be noticeable on the exam. Okay, sir? What's L1 accent? Language one accent. Isn't it amazing that you can actually tell where a person came from by just listening to their accent? 
right? Okay, again, guys, no pun intended, okay? This is just to illustrate, okay? I am so sorry. I don't mean to disrespect any type of pronunciation worldwide, okay? This is to illustrate, okay? Tell me where this person is coming from. <clears throat> Well, there are two types of microscope. The simple microscope and the compound microscope. The simple microscope is focusing on... Oh, diba? oh, alam mo na agad kung saan nang galing yun. Diba? You already know where the person came from, right? Okay, for us. Well, of course, you need to do a lot of things over there, you know. When you go to the United States of America, people will eat a lot of French fries. I mean, not a lot of people speak like that, okay? Not a, Generally, not a lot of people speak like that. But then again, your neutral accent should not sound obvious on the exam, right? Okay, so be careful. Yung iba, gumagamit pa ng po at saka diba sa exam. Diba? One of my students before. Well, you know, if people were to obey the government, then of course you're going to have a good country, diba? Sabi niya sa examen naman niya. <laughs> Naluka yung examiner sa kanya. Pilipino kasi examiner. Sabi niya, well, if people are going to be obeying that, then of course we're going to be having uh, an organized country. Di ba? <laughs> Di ba? Kapampangan. <laughs> That's one of my problems. Yeah. Di ba? Di ba? Yung mga ganyan. Ay, nako. So guys, please, Okay. Please stay away from your L1 accents on the exam, okay? It's okay. If you cannot uh, minimize it, just make sure that it's not going to be affecting the way that you are heard on the test, okay? Stay away from your L1 accent, all right? Okay, moving on. <laughs> stay away from your L1 accent. Okay, moving on. All right, next one. Another expectation of the examination with you is your grammatical range and accuracy. Oh my gosh, Sir Joseph Grammar. Okay, sir, could you please give me a list of the grammatical rules that I would need to review for the IELTS speaking exam? Okay, your wish is my command, girl. I'm going to give you a list of the things that you have to study. Mama got you. Okay, so here you go. Okay, first things first, I'm a realist. Okay, so first is you would need to study the difference between with versus to. Okay? Magkaiba po ang with at saka ang to. Okay? Do you want to know the difference between with and to? When you say with, is that it involves the person and the listener. Okay? So there are two people with with. Okay? I will be speaking with... Uh, I will be speaking with Karina. So it involves me and Karina, okay, or Karina and I. There you go. But then again, if I say, I will be talking to Karina, then of course, it involves Karina only. It's only the listener. So that's the difference between with and to, okay? All right. What else? You would also need to recap subject verb agreement, the things na mga pinilit natin kalimutan nung high school na ngayon pinagsisihan natin, sana ginalingan na lang natin noon. <laughs> I mean, this was discussed when we were in high school, but then again, we did not pay attention because we were too busy putting on Clean and Clear, Johnson's, diba? Um, Crip Paper. <laughs> Sir? Crip Paper, yeah. Crip Paper were the first lip tints in the Philippines, you know? We just have to do this. Oh, gagawin mo Crip Paper. Oh, mapula ni labi mo. <laughs> <laughs> diba? Pambansang polvo, Johnson's, diba? O kaya clean and clear. Ay, wag nyo akong artehan. Wala kayong pulat pa tayong pambili ng Maybelline nung araw, ano? We cannot buy Maybelline during those times. That's why we buy Johnson's baby powder. Lalo na yung cooling at saka yung summer fresh. Diba yung Johnson's pink? <laughs> Then you're going to put it in between your handkerchief, di ba? Lalagay mo sa yangs, yangs, di ba? Lalagay mo dun sa, ano, sa may pagitan ng panyo mo. Tapos kapag ka semi-oily ka, nabubuksan mo. Tapos... Gagalong ka, di ba? At ang cologne ng bata. Mm. Ellipse. Juicy. Di ba? Johnson Summer Swing. <laughs> 
Johnson's na kulay pink, kulay blue. Lahat na ng kulay ng Johnson's. Yun ang kulay. Bench 8, Daily Scent, Bench Atlantis. Oh. Lubayan nyo ko, Bambini. Diba? <laughs> Yung pineapple pop. Angel's breath na hindi maubos-ubos. <laughs> Napakatagal ubusin. <laughs> saka yung neno ko. The, the big cologne like this one. Neno ko, saka dinenes, di ba? Yung neno ko nun, 500 lang. Saka yung dinenes, 550, para gano'n. Ang tagal ubusin nun. Di ba? Naparod nyo ba yung sa piling ng aswang? Yung kay Maricel Soriano? Di ba? Nasundan sila ng aswang dahil dun sa neno ko. O kaya dinenes nung isang babaeng, ano doon, pahid ng pahid ng cologne. <laughs> Okay, what else? Alright, nabilis ang shifting, ha? Number. Okay? Singular versus plural, guys. Okay? Apart from that, countable versus non-countable nouns. Okay? Versus non-countable nouns. Alright? Also, guys, verbs and tenses or the verb tenses. Okay? Prepositions in, on, at. In, on, at for both time and place. Okay, you can research these later on. Recap them. Okay, what else? Articles A, an, and the. Okay, there you go. And of course, your proper sentence structures. All right, so these are the grammatical expectations of the exam. All right, for writing, you just had to you just have to add punctuation and capitalization for writing. But for speaking, this would suffice. Word of the day, suffice. Okay, now here's your favorite. Okay, this is your vocabulary lexical resources. If you go to Google, guys. Okay, if you go to Google. And you look at band 8.0 for the public version of the IELTS speaking band descriptors, you will see that the students should use um, less common vocabulary. And this is a part of it, guys. Okay, Your vocabulary lexical resources would basically entail that you should not be using basic vocabulary. You should use advanced vocabulary, not highfalutin. There's a huge difference between highfalutin and advanced academic words, okay? So first things first, guys, is use uncommon vocabulary. Okay, here's an example. Let's say you're going to say, very good. Oh, it's very, very good. Instead of saying very good, you could say commendable. There you go. Instead of saying very uh, big confusion, Okay, you should actually say it's a conundrum. There you go. Or instead of saying change, you can just say progress. Okay, progress or burgeoning. Sir, what's burgeoning? Me, I'm a burgeon. <laughs> so you're a burgeon? Yes, yeah, somewhere out there. Look for it. Okay, so yeah. What else? Okay. Apart from that, guys, you would need to use business idioms. Okay. This is quite important, guys. Okay. Business idioms on the examination could actually help your scores. Okay. When we say business idioms, you can say, I am on the fence. Go back to the drawing board. There you go. Um, ano pa ba? Pencil something in. Fourth estate. When you say fourth estate, it's social media news. There you go. So those are business idioms. Do not go for the colorful ones. Like, I am through the fire, over the moon. Um, um, ano pa ba yung mga madalas gamitin ng mga estudyante ngayon? Through the fire, over the moon. Um, dati, burning the midnight oil is a good thing. But then again, when, when you put it in a sentence, it doesn't sound too natural. Okay? So be careful with some of the idioms because they tend to be, to be overly colorful on the exam. Okay? All right. So guys, my suggestion, suggestion, okay, is you should use a minimum of advanced, of 12 advanced academic words okay and a minimum of three business idioms on your entire speaking exam okay so use that all right 
apart from that, guys, okay, avoid highfalutin words. Okay, sir, how will I know if the word is considered as highfalutin? Okay, number one, guys, is these words, they do not have a root word. Okay? Halimbawa, this word. Look at this one. Quixotic. Haber glabber. Okay, look at that. Look at quixotic and haber glabber. Right? Or Shanda Freud. Let's say Shanda Freud. I mean, quixotic has no root word. Right? What's the root word of quixotic? Quixotic? Exotic? No, it's not. Right? Or haber glabber per se. Right? Ha What's the root word of haber glabber? Is it haber or glabber? Right? They do not have a root word, so they could be considered as highfalutin words. Okay? Apart from that, unfortunately, guys, yeah, I, our used to be favorite flabbergasted is a part of the highfalutin words. Okay? What else? Apart from that, guys, no, they are either medieval, okay, in origin, or they are informal. Okay? Do not use these words. Okay? Do not use. Medieval words, do not use informal words on the exam. So there was the example of an informal word, dope. Oh, that's a dope. You know, that's a dope thing, you know, because I am totes bomb. You know, when I was on Facebook, mga salita ng mga ano ngayon, salita ng mga bata ngayon, pinag-aral mo para mag-shortcut, di ba? Jesus Christ, you're paying for hundreds of thousands for tuition. This boy cannot even spell totally. <laughs> Diba? Totes bro. Diba? Totes bro. Diba? Totes. Eh, just ko. Ang mahal ng tuition mo. Totally lang. Hindi mo ma-spell. <laughs> okay. So yeah. These are the expectations of the exam with you guys. Okay? So I would want you to be practically focusing on uh, what do you call this? The expectations themselves. Okay? So guys, let's talk about the things that you have to know with the parts. Okay? Before we go to arrangement of your answers, guys, believe me, arrangement of answers is pretty much important. Okay? So you should learn how to arrange your answers after this. Okay? After the parts of the exam or the preview of the parts of the exam, I'm going to discuss to you guys how to arrange your answers. Okay? So stick to the end of the program. Okay? So first things first, guys. Okay? What are the parts of the IELTS exam or the IELTS speaking? Sir, alam ko na yan eh. Part 1, part 2, follow up, part 3. Okay? But let me show you what are the specifications. Okay? When it comes to the different parts. Okay? So first things first, guys, is what we call the task 1 or the basic interview. Okay. Guys, when we say basic interview, what we mean by this one is it is a small talk. Okay? It's virtually impossible for students not to have an idea about the topic. Okay, virtually impossible for students, okay, not to have an idea about the topics here. Because basically, all questions will be related to your preferences. Okay, all questions will be related to your preferences okay yung preference mo yung experience mo yung idea mo okay so everything here you have an idea when students tell me that they do not have an idea on my coaching room when students tell me sir i'm sorry i don't have an idea about the question on the part one i think of it as an excuse because basically it's virtually impossible for students not to have an idea about the questions here. So basically, you will be asked approximately four to five questions here, sometimes six if you're lucky enough, okay? And you just have to relate your answers to yourself, okay? So if you were asked the question, how can I relate to this? What are the things that I can say about the question? Let's say the question is, what is a game that you love playing when you were younger? Who's gay? Who is being asked here? Is it you or your sister? Right? Who plays the game? Who played the game? Was it you or your sister? It was you, right? So what was a game that you love playing when you were younger? Right? Well, I do love Luk Song Tinek when I was younger. <laughs> or we call it Chatong. 
Shatong ba yun? Shatong sa amin eh. Yung, yung may stick. Yung ginaganon. Shatong ba yun? Di ba? Hello. 1998. Chinese Garter World Champ. Right here. <laughs> At saka 1020. Sino dito hindi naglaro ng 1020 bata sa paking ko? Diba? 1020, 1020, 30, 40. Tapos magic trick ka sa dulong. <laughs> okay, so that's the task one, okay? You have to relate your answers to yourself, okay? Chinese garter, diba? Yung pagmataas na nasisipa mo yung ulo nung... <laughs> May hawak ng goma. Harang bakla. Ay, harang taga pala. <laughs> harang taga. What's... Guys, I have a question. Ngayon lang pumasok sa isip ko to. What's patintero in English? It's not tag. Because tag is taya-tayaan. Come on, help me out. What's patintero in English? I mean, I know piko is hopscotch. London Bridge is ring around the rosy. Tagutaguan is hide and go seek. Um, Luksong baka is leaping frog. So ano ang English ng patintero? <laughs> Di ba? Gumawa tayo na ikakasakit ng ulo natin. Ano nga ba English ng patintero? Okay. Now, task two guys is what we call the task card. Okay. So here, guys, on the task card, basically, what the examiner expects of you to do here is you will be given one minute to prepare. Okay, there is a one minute preparation time. Okay, and then after that, guys, no, uh, you will you here you will be given a paper. Pencil or pen, because sometimes yung ibang review, is, yung ibang exam center, social, pen, okay? Paper, okay, you'll be given a paper, okay, uh, a pencil, okay, and of course, the question card, okay, or the task card, okay? So here you would need to talk for two full minutes, okay, without interruption, okay? When we say two full minutes without interruption, your examiner will be a statue here. They will just listen to you. Okay? All right. So, what else? Apart from that, guys, no? Here, all bullet points should be answered. Okay? <clears throat> I know some of the bullet points are just guide questions, but then again, the bullet points are placed there for you to answer them, so try to answer all the bullet points. Okay? Actually, for my students, I recommend for them to answer all the bullet points. Okay? And then the next part, guys, is the follow-up round. Okay? So, sir, what do we do with the follow-up round? Okay, for the follow-up round, guys, basically here, you will be asked questions which are related to your part two topic, okay? You will be asked questions which are related to your part two topic, okay? So guys, it could be two to three questions only, okay? Just two to three questions here which are related to your uh, topic on the part two, okay? So halimbawa, ang topic mo sa part two ay, let's say, uh, book, di ba? So you might be asked questions here about how did books change over time? What do you think? Uh, what Do you think that there will still be books in the future or physical books in the future or printed books in the future? Yung mga ganyan. So it's all about that, okay? They are all related to your topic on the part two, okay? So basically here, you have to detail about your answers, okay? All right. And then, guys, task three is the abstract round, okay? Or the two-way discussion. It depends on your examiner. Okay. So the abstract round, guys, you're going to be asked detailed, in-depth questions. Okay? So dito po ang itatanong sa inyo ay mga in-depth questions. Okay? When we say in-depth questions, these are not basic questions. Like for example, like for example about um population, society, education, transportation, recycling, um, studying in another country, not religion. They don't ask about religion, believe me, okay? They don't ask about religion, race, um, faith. They don't ask about that, 
Okay, so you will be asked um, in-depth abstract questions here, like tourism, diba? Do you think it's a good idea for nations to open their tourism early on in the pandemic? So what do you think? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? And then you're going to explain that to your examiner, okay? So guys, remember that the examiner might, okay, might try to rattle you here. Okay, when we say they might try to rattle you here, they might try to ask you more difficult questions. Actually, what I always tell my students, if the examiners ask you difficult questions here, no, if the examiners ask you difficult questions here, be happy. Okay, be happy because they saw that you have good potentials. That's why they're trying to see, they're trying to look at your ceiling. Okay, when they're asking you difficult questions here. Okay, what else? Apart from that, guys, another thing is you will be asked four to five questions here. Okay, it depends on your examiner or it depends on your performance, really. If you're doing well, so that's my, that would be three to four questions only. If you're not doing so well, then you might be asked more than that. Okay, pwede kang matanong ng more than that pa. Relate match sa kulon, ha ha ha. Square game. Ay! There you go. We already know da. We already know what, 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 ano tawag dito? <laughs> what the English of harang taga or patintero is square game, block the runner, escape from hell, squid game, but di pa temple run, di ba temple run? <laughs> <laughs> What's the anong English ng patintero kaya? Talaga nag-research kayo ha. Gusto mo 'yon, Squid Game Mark? <laughs> Kakawa. Sigagan <laughs> umiikot-ikot yung matanggal tapos babarling tan lang bigla. <laughs> Naalala ko na may squid game na 'yan. Hanip na 'yan talaga. Ay nako, sa mga hindi pa po nakaka-upload ng squid game, panoorin niyo na ho bago ho siya mawala doon sa Netflix. <laughs> Temple run. <laughs> <laughs> Temple run. <laughs> okay, so guys, no. Um, what I always tell my students is it's pretty much effective you uh, to give your all, okay? Give your all, okay, on this part because this is your last impression. Okay, the moment that your examiner is trying to recap your performance or trying to grade you or the moment that your examiner is trying to, uh, what do you call this, look at your matrix, they might remember this. Okay, they might remember, it's very likely that they will remember the third part. Okay, so you have to do well here. Okay, this should be your last impression. Okay, are you ready to learn about systematically arranging your answers? Intro pa lang po yun. Aabutin po tayo ng 5.30 a.m. ngayon. Philippines time. Carry po. <laughs> okay, guys, if you're ready to learn about detailing your answers, please type 1. Okay. <clears throat> One W A N. <laughs> Follow instructions. One W A N. Very good, babies. There you go. <laughs> okay, so guys, before that, okay, let me just make a very special announcement to each and everyone. Okay, all right. So guys, everybody, 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 say. Happy anniversary to Elite Intellect 9. Cheers for another year of excellence at Elite Intellect, guys. So today, we're officially celebrating our anniversary at Elite Intellect. And of course, you know that it has been a tradition for us to have an anniversary offer for the students. Ito po ay inaabangan taon-taon ng mga estudyante when it comes to Elite Intellect. Okay, so sir, what is your anniversary promo right now? Okay, so if you are a student who is looking for an institution, guys, okay, we offer all our our review programs on unlimited unlimited review programs for almost 70% off i think okay so sir our anniversary promo guys is unlimited ielts review for
for only 3,500 instead of paying 7,999. Again, pay only 3,500 for, uh, for your unlimited IELTS review instead of paying 7,999. If you're going to be taking the NCLEX or CBT, play, pay only 5,999 instead of 25,000. And if you're going to be taking the unlimited OET review, pay only 3,999 instead of paying 8,999. This is a way for us to say thank you for the people who has supported Elite Intellect from the beginning, okay? So if you would want to avail of our anniversary promo, guys, okay, it's a limited review, okay? It is a review program designed to help you prepare better for your IELTS exam, OET, or NCLEX. It is unlimited with no expiration, free materials, book and writing compilation, live and recorded classes for more flexible schedules, 100 hours of one-on-one -on -one assessment and, and, and writing coaching, 20 hours of assessment with the master lecturer, and one-on-one -on -one uh, uh, sessions on grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. All of them are unlimited. Kasi kapag, halimbawa, nag-take ka ngayon, tapos hindi ka nakapag-process two years from now, nag-expire, mag-take ka ulit, Pwedeng pwede. Bumalik ka lang sa Elite Intellect because this is the unlimited anniversary promo. Okay, so sir, I'm interested with the anniversary promo. Just go to our Facebook page. Okay, check the link that Mom Genji and Sir Jello has sent you there on our chat box. If you're at Zoom in on Facebook, they will be sending you guys on the comment section the link of Elite Intellect. Just click that and type anniversary promo for you to avail of our exclusive discounts as we celebrate our anniversary. You may also search us on Facebook. That's Elite Intellect 9. Okay, Elite Intellect 9.0 or contact us at WhatsApp. That's plus 6391669792994. Okay, so guys, don't miss the chance to have the biggest discount that you could possibly have when it comes to your IELTS preparation because our anniversary promo will only run up to Tuesday. Okay, hanggang Tuesday lang po, all right? So message mom Tanya now and save slots for our anniversary promo. I'll see you guys in class very, very soon. Okay, so, hi, ang saya. <clears throat> all right, okay. All right, there you go. So guys, now for those of you on Facebook, if you would want to find our Facebook page, just click the link that Mom Genji and Sir Kael Jalo Gael has sent you. Sabihin nyo lang po kay Mom Tanya do sa Facebook page namin, anniversary promo, okay? IELTS po, 3.5 lang. OET po ay 3,999. Tapos NCLEX Unlimited is 5,999. San ka pa? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we have a question. Question po. Is it appropriate po ba to tell a topic in the part two that it's like gory or tragic if related naman po sa question? It's possible if it's a little bit, um, what do you call this, interesting. But then again, anak, if it's too much, try to avoid gory topics. Okay? Baka mama, ikaw, you're talking about liver, opening the liver of people, yung mga ganyan, or dissecting a human being. Na, just ko. Baka maluka ang examiner mo sa <laughs> okay, so guys, let me just drink water quickly, okay? Give me approximately three minutes. Mom Genji, while I'm drinking water, okay, could you please give more tips for the students on how they can actually think or speak faster on the IELTS? Okay, uh, hello to the 205 Zoom uh, live FB viewers and to the, how many? Okay, 94. Uh, Zoom participants. So this is your sister dragon. This is your Ate Genji. Okay, everything has been said by Mother D, but the, uh, the thing that I could uh, help you uh, pass the IELTS speaking examination, especially this, the speaking, is to practice daily. Uh, when I took the examination last year, I usually have three to five marks a day. And the same question has been asked from me for me for the uh, fifth time and for sure on the end time that I will have my mock, I will definitely get the answer. So please practice guys. And another thing would be to um, use the structure that Mother D gave us because this is these are the things that will help you structure your answer in the IELTS speaking ex examination. And the, another thing is to aim high. Okay, if, you're, uh, if your desired band score is seven, aim high, try to reach uh, um, the band score eight or nine, if you can, and uh, try to read on the band descriptors for each of uh, each of this category. So uh, that so that uh, whenever you would uh, somehow fall behind, then still you are on the uh, desired band score that you are uh, th that you desire. Okay. So those are the things that uh, has helped me. Uh, 
pass the exam uh, examination with flying colors and also thanks to thanks to elite intellect because uh, they have helped me uh, pass this quite onerous examination. And I would like to say happy anniversary to all the elite students right now that we have here in Zoom and in FB. So happy anniversary to you guys. And we are really blessed to have you with us in elite. And uh, yes, Mother D is back. So I'm giving the floor, the ceiling and everything to you, Mother. Happy anniversary. I love happy you. Happy anniversary. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ate Genji. Actually, gusto ko yun. I'm giving the floor, the ceiling, the wall. Yung ganyan to yung bed ko yun. That's a new idiomatic expression, okay? Originally, from elite intellect. I'm giving back the floor, the ceiling, and the wall to you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, guys, that's actually true. Okay. I remember when Ate Genji, even the batches of your Sir Jeff, Ma'am Gladys, Mr. M, yung mga, yung mga magagaling talaga, sila Sir Manuel, Ma'am Ethel, sila Ma'am Michelle, sila Ate Genji, sila Ma'am Zaya, yung mga batches na yan, you know, I have one thing that I admire with those groups because every time Uh, you will see them live online at Zoom practicing with their speaking during your Sir Jeff's batch. I think it's eight whole hours of practice open cam. Guys, okay? So nothing beats practice on the IELTS speaking examination. All right? Now, let's talk about structuring your answers. Okay? Our last lesson for tonight is to structure your answers. Okay? Basically, guys, okay? One thing that I would want you to remember when it comes to structuring your answers is this is to help your examiner understand you better, okay? Again, this is to help your examiner understand you better, okay? All right, so structuring will help your examiner understand you better okay kasi yung iba they tend to give like very confusing responses on the exam like so confusing that the examiners might actually not understand what they're trying to say okay i'll give you an example of an answer that is not structured okay look at this one not structured answers i want you to find the mistake okay on this one apart from the spelling of answer <laughs> Okay, apart from the spelling of answer, there you go. So look at this one. The question is, what can you say about poverty or about the poverty rate in your country? Okay, let's say that is the question, guys, okay? And then the student responded this one. Okay, let's take a look at this sample answer, guys. Okay, tignan nyo to. The question is, what can you say about the poverty rate in your country? And then the speaker said, well, poverty is a problem in many parts of the world. For instance, many families suffer from hunger. For example, in my area alone, there are a lot of poor families. So that is what I can say with the poverty rate in my country. Okay, what do you think is wrong with this statement? Okay, what what made you think that this is, uh, what do you call this? What do you think that this is, uh, ano to? What made you think that this is a disorganized answer? Okay, ano sa tingin nyo ang dahilan kung bakit disorganized tong response na to? Okay, come on, come on, come on. Be observant, guys. Come on. For you to learn, you have to know what makes this disorganized. 
Okay, first things first. Let me highlight for you. Okay, ito. Tignan nyo to. Well, poverty is a problem in many parts of the world. Look at this one. This one is not even related to the question. The question is, what can you say about the poverty rate in your country? And you're talking about the world. Okay? The question is something that is specific and you are talking about the world. Right? So that's the first thing. Okay? Tignan nyo. Second one, guys. Second error here is the speaker used the word for instance already. Okay? The speaker already used the word for instance and then the speaker again used for example. So that is quite redundant. As yes, we would like to say because for instance and for example, they're almost the same in meaning. Instance is an instance. Example is something that is exemplar. But then again, they are pointing towards one meaning, which is both of them are supplementing ideas and not explanations okay and then what's the last thing that made this uh what they call this not organized okay i know sa tingin nyo ang last one na ginawa itong not organized response look at this one the speaker repeated the question Diba? Look at this one, at the end part. So that is what I can say with the poverty rate of my country. Ang pinalitan lang outcome. No? Apart from that, the speaker has no direct answer about the question itself. What can you say about the poverty in your country? Was it increasing, decreasing, constant, fluctuating? Diba? Was it the same when you were born? Do you think that um, poverty, there was a surge with the poverty rate in your country? What happened? Okay, so look at that. When your answer is not structured, guys, believe me, it's quite difficult for your examiners to understand you. Okay, dito. Well, poverty is a problem in many parts of the world. For instance, many families suffer from hunger. For example, in my area alone, there are a lot of poor families. So that is what I can say with the poverty rate in my country. Look at that, right? So it's not structured, okay? So Sir Joseph, how can I structure my answer? Okay, the good news is there is a formula for that. Let me show you the formula for structuring your answer. Okay, <clears throat> let me insert a table here. Okay? Para makita natin yung structure ng answer. Okay? So you have... Five tables. Okay. So look at this one. <clears throat> All right. So first things first, guys, is you would need to give your direct response. Okay? That's the first part is you're going to give your examiner your direct idea about the question or your direct response about the topic. Okay? If you were asked, what do you think about the poverty rate in your country? So if you feel like it's escalating or it's showing a surge over time, then you should say that. Okay? So... Next one, after your direct idea or direct response is you're going to explain it, okay? You must explain your direct idea and then your direct response. Now, if you still have time, you can give your, exa you can give your example to your examiner, okay? And do not forget, if your examiner is still listening to you, you may close your statements, so what is a closing statement? Is it in conclusion? No, it's not. Actually, you should not be saying in conclusion on the speaking exam because the word in conclusion has been speci specified for the writing. No? So sir, ano ba ang direct response? Okay? Basically, when we say direct response, this is your idea. Okay? So here you're going to state your idea about the question. There you go. So on the direct response, you must state your idea about the question itself. Like let's say you were asked, what is your favorite food? Okay? So you said you love eating apples. Okay? So basically, kailangan, isabi mo na dyan, I love eating apples. Okay? And then for the explanation, guys, here, this is the reason. Okay? Why you, state, you have stated... 
your direct idea. Okay? So this is usually one to two sentences. Okay? Uh, one to two sentences would be enough for the explanation part. Okay? Sir, what types of examples can I use on the exam? Okay? Well, there are a lot. Actually, you may use your experience, your view, or a person. Okay? You may also use research or media. Okay, you may also use, uh, what do you call this? You may also use a country for an example. Okay, a country, an implementation, anything that would support your direct idea, you may use it as an example on the test. Okay, so look at that, guys. Okay, you already have your direct idea about the topic. And then after that, the reason why you stated your direct idea and then your example. Okay, so Sir Joseph, how can I close my statements, okay? Uh, what is a good way for me to close my statement on the exam? Okay, so when you're about to close your statements, there are a lot of things that you could do. So first things first, guys, you may close it as it is. Okay, when we say close it as it is, you can say, so that is my idea about the, uh, so that is my idea about the topic itself. Okay, so you're closing it like that. So that is my idea about the question. So that's my idea about the topic in itself. Okay, you may close it like that, or you may give a recommendation. Okay, if you, uh, if you would want to recommend something, you may recommend here, you may also predict. Okay. Okay. Predict is the same as you're going to state a result, okay? Not future tense, okay? You're going to state a result. Yes, it's applicable for part one and part three, my love, uh, but not for part two because part two's technique is quite different, okay? All right, and apart from that, guys, you may also give them a logical point, okay? So look at that. You may arrange your answers like this on the exam. First is you can give them your direct response, Okay, and then you should explain your idea with your examiner. Okay, and then after explaining it, give them an example. And then after that, you can give them a closing statement. Okay, I'll give you an example of a structured answer. Okay, look at this one. The question is how... Okay, let me type the answer first and then I will itemize it for you, okay? Okay, hold on, guys. Let me just get my charger. Okay. <clears throat>
Okay, so let's take a look at the sample answer. It might it might look long, but it's not. Believe me. Okay, so this one is my direct idea about the question itself. Okay, that one is my direct idea. And then here I explained my direct idea by saying so as to ensure. Okay, this is my explanation. Okay, and then here, guys, this is my example right there. Okay, and then this is my closing. I made a recommendation on my closing part. Okay, again, on the closing, you may recommend, you may predict, or you may use a memorable line. Okay, let's say again, the question is, how can we encourage children to read more? Basically, by taking the things that is distracting them or the things which are distracting them. Sorry. Which are... Okay, basically by taking the things which are distracting them so as to ensure that the young can pay more attention to things that matter with learning, which is reading. On the accounts of studies before, students nowadays cannot read like the learners before due to the games and the way that they chat on their mobile. It is better recommended for parents to be stringent with this to ensure that the students will actualize on learning rather than staying in their digital words to ensure analysis. Okay, so I know analysis development, okay? So look at that, right? Instead of trying to mix in the ideas, you can arrange it this way. Your direct answer, your explanation, your example, and your closing. Sir, question. Usually po on the exam, are we going to reach the closing statement or the example? No. Believe me. Some examiners, they will tend to interrupt you, okay? On the explanation part, when you're done explaining before you even give your example, they will interrupt you. If that happens, guys, don't be afraid. Don't be distracted. That doesn't mean that your examiner does not like you, okay? If the examiner says, okay, um, moving on to the next question, it doesn't mean that they do not like you. What it means is that they heard what they needed to hear. It's time for them to move on to the next question, okay? Don't panic if your examiner does that. But then again, some examiners, they love listening to the structures of the students, well, most of the examiners love listening to the structures of the students. So, minsan aabot kayo sa closing statement. So, if you feel like your examiner is still interested and your examiner is still listening to you, okay, so you're still listening. I'll give you an example. Oh, okay, so you're still listening. I'll close the statement. There you go. But some of the examiners, they will interrupt you before you even reach uh, what they call this, the closing part, okay? Kung minsan, explanation lang, kung minsan, example lang. But then again, when you are, come to think of it, if you're arranging your answers, then you know what to say next. The common cause of mental block is you don't know what to say, okay? You don't know what to say next, diba? You, you have a lot of ideas in your head, but you do not know how to say it. It's because you're not arranging your thoughts. So arrange it this way. Your direct idea, your explanation, your example, and then your closing statement, okay? All right, so look at that. All right, so guys, okay, on the examination, Paul, please make sure that when you are asked the question, just relax, calm down, answer the question. And the most important tip that I give, gave my students at Elite this afternoon is for them to enjoy the conversation. Okay, guys, so that is our lesson for today. Next week, I will be teaching you guys technique for the part one and part two, or would you want me to discuss connectors and vocabulary including idiomatic expressions next week which one would you want option a part one and part two part one and part two techniques option b connectors vocabulary and idiomatic expressions which one do you want me to discuss next week here live at ifng uh, option a or option b which one do you want okay we want all all oh, this again <laughs> Oh, sige, ganito. Next week po, we're going to be discussing about connectors, transitional phrases in speaking, uh, vocabulary, and idiomatic expressions. And then the week after that, we're going to be discussing part one and part two techniques. And then the week after that will be follow-up and part three, uh, part past three techniques. Okay, so, so as to ensure that you guys will get a systematic learning when it comes to your IELTS preparation. Okay, guys. All right. So before we end our lesson for tonight, guys, the most important message of all, the most important technique that I can teach you tonight is this one.
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Okay? This is from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Okay, guys? One thing's for sure, anxiety, is will, it will always be there. It will try to ruin your day. It will even try to ruin your examination. But then again, if you are presenting your worries to the Lord, then you do not have to be anxious for anything. Okay? So guys, let's pray for each and everyone who attended um, this live class for tonight. Okay? Let's pray quickly. Okay, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to spread your word and to teach the students when it comes to their IELTS preparation. Father, it is our honor for us to be able to share our knowledge to them. Lord God, I am praying for the admins of IFNG. You know that they are helping a lot of students when it comes to their IELTS preparation, Lord God. Lord, bless them, guide them, and protect them, my Father. And Lord, I am praying for this one right here. This student right here is preparing for his or her IELTS examination. Lord, you know that they are... they. they They need this, not just for them to have better salaries, but for them to have better lives. And Father, when they go to their target countries and when they pass their examination, they will see your power in uh, in their lives, my Lord God. Lord, I pray for the institutions, Father, who are helping the students at IFNG, Lord God. Lord, bless the institutions always. My Father, thank you so much for guiding the student, students towards the way and path of Elite Intellect 9. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. Woo, what a fun discussion for tonight, right? Okay, so guys, huh? If you would want to avail our anniversary promo, okay, for the IELTS, just message our Facebook page, okay? Our Facebook page is right there on the link on the chat box of Zoom. And of course, it's also on the comment section on Facebook. Just type anniversary promo for you to avail our huge discount for our anniversary promo for this week, okay? So guys, I'll see you guys next week, 9 p.m. PHT again, live here at IFNG, okay? So So, in behalf of the staff of Elite Intellect 9, this is your Mama Dragon sending my love to you from the Philippines. I'll see you guys again on Friday, 9 p.m. PHT. Don't forget, invite your friends for them to watch our live here again on Friday at 9 p.m. Back to you, Sir Jeff! Sir Jeff. Thank you, guys. See you guys next week. Have a great day, everyone.
Okay. That's all. Thank you so much and happy anniversary. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Sir Jeff.